silence, ça tourne, action. Je suis Smit Kimball, je suis musicien de New York, je suis à la piano, je suis en train de tourner avec plus de 50 marathons, et je suis aussi le meilleur de tourner avec plus de 80. Je suis aussi le meilleur de la musique, je suis aussi le meilleur de la musique, je suis aussi le meilleur de la musique, je suis aussi le meilleur de I first came to Tunisia in 2007. I was invited by already an American association that was making a collaboration with a Tunisian association to make a stage d'été summer music camp. And I taught piano. And then after these 10 days, they invited me to come the following year. And they kept inviting me one year after the next, after the next, after the next. And it's just 10 days in Tunisia. And so it was interesting and I was getting to know a lot of people. But after the revolution, there was a lot of new interest in civil society. And so lots of people were starting political parties and associations and things like that. And so I got to meet many more people in Tunisia after that, including people like the former finance minister, Jalou Layed, who's also a composer. And this continued sort of the Tunisian journey. I also met Radi Medeb at that time, who started his association, Action et Développement Solidaire. And so we started to discuss uh, what I was doing as a pianist all over the world and what he was trying to do with his association in Tunisia, which is centered around the idea of inclusion. We were trying to combine music and inclusion. So that is to try to make what was happening in these summer music camps possible all over the country. So in the summer music camp, we only had maybe 20 or 30 people, but we wanted to try to find a system or a way to involve thousands of students if possible. And so it was really out of this that the concept of Tunisia 88 was born um, by knowing a lot of students, by knowing also their parents, many of whom are teachers in the education system and who gave me some insights on the education system, knowing Radi Medeb, who has this concept of inclusion and he was trying to promote this. And then in 2015, um, there was an education minister in the Tunisian Ministry of Education, uh, Neji Jalul, and he kept talking about reviving music clubs and reviving cultural clubs in general. That's really the, the genesis, the beginning of Tunisia 88, and that's also why Tunisia. So it's not so much that I chose Tunisia and then decided to do that. It's an organic process over a period of a lot of years. And I like to say that Tunisia chose me rather than I chose Tunisia, or rather there was a some sort of mutual choice involved. At the very beginning of the project, I can't say that we expected what was happening now, but as time, as we started, we started of course with just one club and we saw there was about eight members in that club. And then we started with the second club, which also had somewhere between five and 10 members. And then we started to make estimations from there. You know, wow, if we have 10 clubs, maybe we'll have between 50 and 100. So then you can start to, to make estimations. So, you know, from the beginning, did I imagine that it would grow to the size? No, but once we started, Yes, I would say yes. We started to understand that if we were to continue to go down the path we were going, that we could reach this type of size. And I actually think we could we could get to roughly double this size if all of the schools are participating as we hope they will. I think we would maybe somewhere between three and 6,000 members would be if you know, most of the schools were functioning well, something like that. From the time I started teaching at the summer music program, what I saw was incredible amounts of natural talent, natural ability. To be very honest, not a lot of cultivation of this talent. And I understood very quickly, uh, especially when it comes to creativity, because a lot of the music education is not based on creativity that's happening in this country. A lot of it is based on very kind of strict style of learning scales and learning solfege. These skills are important, but they're really just only one piece of a very large puzzle. So when you have a very large puzzle and you ignore most of the puzzle and you only focus on one piece for many years with young kids, sometimes they get very, very discouraged or they become very unnatural actually because they're only focusing on one small piece. So for Tunisia 88, we're not trying to make sales, scales and solfages for only a certain part. So I understood that there was a huge potential that was not being really tapped into. I thought that if we could just give a little bit of organization and a lot of encouragement and some exciting goals, exciting mission, exciting uh, activities like 
concerts in El Gem Festival or create your own song or make your own event. I suspected that there could be a lot of beautiful things happening, actually without many resources, actually. And that's what we found to be true so far. In five years, I hope that the alumni will be running all of Tunisia 88. And I think in 10 years, and also in five years, that Tunisia 88 will have many jumelage, or we can say exchange programs with other countries that are also making clubs that are similar. And I think that many Tunisia 88 alumni also can come into important positions, whether they have their own business or whether they're in uh, some kind of position in government or whether they're in some kind of position um, you know, that has a lot of influence, that we can keep developing program developing a sensitivity to this type of not only creative creativity and music making but also this type of civic engagement coming from high school students and allowing them to participate the more that the members of Tunisia 88 are installed in positions of influence they can also encourage more and more students so I see it moving in that, in that direction.